Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the I Worship service of Eastminster United Church. It's a service that we like to call, this service has 32 minutes or thereabouts. It is Sunday the 13th of September, and the weather here in Belleville has taken uh, a downward turn in terms of temperature, so that we're beginning to feel that the autumn is well on the way. And... Uh, Normally at this time of year, our children are going back to school and uh, in the past we've had a service which we have called a blessing of the backpacks. Well, uh, last year we had a, a wonderful service. It involved uh, you know, the puppets that we have from time to time, a little lunch afterwards, a couple of uh, fire trucks and Police cars showed up afterwards for the children to look at it, and it was a lot of fun. But as with all things during this pandemic, all that is out the window. But we still want to acknowledge our young people today, and uh, we're acknowledging that a little bit in the message and a little bit, uh, of course, in our prayers as we pray for the children going back to school and the school year, what's probably a very challenging school year ahead. Well, with that in mind, let us begin and let us worship the Lord as we pray together. On this Lord's Day, we draw near to you, O Lord. It is still a bit strange doing this in our kitchens and our living rooms on Sunday mornings. We long to be in your house and Yet we know from your word that you are not limited to specific places, but can be accessed, uh, whether it be in the highest height or the deepest depth. You are there. You alone are God, and we come. We kneel in our hearts before you. We trust that even though we may not fully see, you are with us. You are among us. And may your spirit reach out this morning and touch us, that we may continue to grow in knowledge and in devotion to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're going to hear from our music team today. Uh, I think it's George and uh, Jean and Bruce again, and they will be singing, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. 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 Baby 
his hands he's got you and me brother in his hands he's got you and me brother in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands Scripture reading this morning is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, and reading verses 3 through 14. Paul has just introduced himself to the Christians at Coloss, and he says, In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. May the Lord bless to our understanding this reading from his holy word. Well, after the longest break in perhaps a lifetime, schools have opened up again. And for some strange reason, the big yellow school bus pulls up in front of my door. So I was able to watch last uh, Tuesday out of my office window. The children don their backpacks and go off to school, some of them probably for the first time. I, I sensed in some of the younger children perhaps uh, excitement and wonder and maybe a little bit of fear. With the older children, they were cool, of course. This was no big deal to them or at least they didn't want it to appear so, but generally things were pretty normal for the first day of school, except for one thing. This being a COVID-19 year meant that when the big yellow school bus pulled up, all the kids dived into their backpack or dived into their pockets and they pulled out their masks. 
and they had to wear masks before they could board the bus. I found it sad in some ways, but also interesting because there were all kinds of masks. Some children were wearing medical masks or, or something that looked like medical masks. Others were wearing cloth masks, and of the cloth masks, there were all kinds of colors and patterns. And uh, one young girl was wearing a, a pink mask with, with little uh, cat whiskers on it that was pretty cute. Young lad had a Leafs mask. That was cool. Masks are, are fast becoming a, a fashion statement, and I'm sure in the playgrounds of the nation, uh, there will be lots of discussions about what masks are good and what masks are bad and who has the best mask. Of course, we're all wearing masks now, and uh, most of us anyway. Uh, the masks that I generally like are quite plain, like this one, which is, which is all black on the outside. Um, sometimes I like ones that have a little logo or crest uh, on them. I, I've seen the Prime Minister wear a black one with a little red maple leaf on it, and that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not much taken with those big masks that have, you know, covered in stuff like the big American flag or the big letters MAGA or something like that. I prefer the more, the smaller little uh, icons or symbols. I, I saw a nice Raptors mask the other day, and uh, and there was even a nice Montreal Canadiens uh, mask, although why anyone would want to wear one of those, uh, Bruce Goodman, are you listening? Uh, I don't know. One of my favorite masks, um, sorry, Bruce, one of my favorite masks uh, is, uh, I saw this online, it was a black mask with uh, the crest of Manchester United on one side of it, and uh, that was a very good mask because, of course, they're the best. Um, but in all seriousness, the mask that I liked most that I've seen has been uh, a mask with just two elongated arcs on it in the shape of a small fish. And you may well ask, why do you like a plain mask with a little fish on it? And uh, I would have to tell you that that fish, that very simple line drawing, two elongated arcs, is an ancient, an ancient Christian symbol. And when it started, it was a secret, a secret symbol. Because back in the second century, from time to time, and in certain places within the Roman Empire, the Christians would be persecuted. If something went wrong in a region, the authorities had to find someone to blame, as they do now, and frequently it would be the Christians they would pick, pick on. Furthermore, Christians were not ones to bow down to images of the Caesar, the emperor, and worship him, and uh, for that they were persecuted, they were thrown into prison, they were treated horribly and sometimes even died as a result of their treatment. So in some places, Christians would keep their faith secret and uh, they wouldn't talk to others or they'd be cautious about whom they told that they followed Jesus. Now, tradition has it that when there was a meeting of Christians, I like a worship time, the word would go out on social media or whatever they had in those days, and they would be told to meet in a certain place and a certain region, but it wouldn't be very specific, and so they might meet in an area in a forest, and someone would scratch in the ground or on a tree these two elongated arcs in the shape of the fish, and the people would know they were going the right into the right place for the meeting. Or uh, in a house, there would be the ark scratched into a wall or a gate to let people know that that was a Christian household. And it's even said that when uh, someone was out uh, going uh, to uh, the next town or something and maybe w encountered a stranger on the way, um, they would chat for a while, but nonchalantly someone might just draw one of those arcs on on the ground with a stick and 
if the other person drew the other arc to make it into the symbol of a fish, they knew that it was safe to talk to that person about Christian things. So the fish was a symbol and it was a secret symbol among Christians. But why a fish? Why a fish? Well, the language that was spoken in that region at the time was called Greek and a particular variation of Greek called Koine. And the Greek word for fish was ichthus. Now that probably means nothing to you, but the Christians in that time recognized that this word ichthus could be used as an acronym. And so they got thinking about it and they found that, well, the first letter is an iota. And, uh, well, the first letter of Jesus' name, Jesus, is an iota. And the second letter is a chi. Well, first letter of, of Jesus, uh, the, his being the Messiah, uh, is uh, a chi, Christos. And then the third letter, it was a theta. And they thought about it. And yes, the first letter of the word for God, theos or theu in this case, of God, uh, that was used. Then uh, the fourth letter was an upsilon. Well, the first letter of what Jesus is, the son, we us, that'll work. And then there's the last letter, a sigma. And the sigma is actually the first letter of the Greek word uh, for um, savior. And uh, so the Christians found this, that this word ichthus, if you used it as an acronym, it could be Jesus Christos, Theo Vios Soter. In our language, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. And so this little symbol of the fish and the letters of this, the word for fish, ichthus, were very precious to the Christians and they kept it as a secret. They kept it as a secret symbol that indicated that the person who uh, wore that symbol or the house that, that uh, bore that symbol or the place that bore that symbol, that was a Christian place, a Christian house. The person was a Christian. And it said so much in the acronym about, about who Jesus was. It says he's the Messiah, the Christos. It says he's the Son of God, Theu, Weos. It says he's the Savior, Soter. Just sounds very much like something, for instance, John said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. The fish, what a nice symbol, wonderful symbol. And it's a symbol that can link us with the past. It's a symbol that can link us with early Christians. It reminds us of who Jesus is, the Messiah, Son of God, Savior. And uh, there are lots of Christian symbols these days, lots and lots of them. I think the cross is probably the most prevalent symbol that we have out there. But uh, the cross has kind of become mm, a common item, just common in jewelry. And people wear cross earrings and cross necklaces and a little cross on their uh, lapel or something. And it often doesn't mean much. It doesn't say much about a person's faith. But the, these arcs, elongated arcs that make a fish, they're less well known. They are known as something Christian, but less well known. The meaning behind them is hardly known at all. It, it's, it's still almost a secret in terms of what it means. And so I wonder if we could adopt this symbol again, at least adopt it more readily in the church and perhaps put it on our masks or on other things. But you know, 
there's a word of caution if we're going to adopt this symbol because it's something that we need to live up to. When the Apostle Paul prayed for the faithful Christians in Colos, one of the prayers that he uh, uttered in the first few verses is that they would lead lives worthy of the Lord. And if we wear this ancient symbol, it's important not just to wear it, but that we live the things that lie behind this symbol, that we live lives worthy of the Lord. For Christianity isn't just about symbols, it's not just about words, it's not just about faith, it's not just about grace. Christianity is more than these things, it's something to be lived. It's a response to God's grace. It's a way of life. It's a turning away from old things to what is new in Jesus Christ. You know, we may be the closest thing to Jesus that someone sees. And so if we're going to wear a Christian symbol like the little fish, we need to live it. We need to embody the words of the prophet Micah, for instance, that we do justice and love kindness and walk humbly before our Lord. We need to do the things that Paul calls us to, to live with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, and I forgot patience in there. If we're going to put these two elongated arcs in, on, on our masks, bumper sticker on our car, on our business card or whatever. It gives us responsibility. Because it links us with the past, it links us with those early Christians, the early Christians who suffered greatly for their beliefs. It links us with a serious faith in Christ. It links us with some specific beliefs about Jesus. Most people don't know these things, but they do loosely associate this image of the fish with Christianity. And so it makes us an advertisement for Jesus. And that can be a challenge. But it's also a calling. Lead lives worthy of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come together today in different places, different times probably. And we've come together in one love, one desire to know more of you. We come seeking the one who is holy, the one who is gracious, the one who is love. We come seeking the presence of one who is immortal and invisible and whose complexities we can barely comprehend. We come to you with a sense of wonder and awe. We come humbly because we're not worthy to eat the crumbs from your table and yet again and again you've shown yourself to love even the little things of this world and you've shown yourself to love us. Today we're thinking about signs and symbols and the ancient symbol of the fish that was so meaningful to early Christians. Meaningful because its letters pointed to Jesus. Meaningful because it helped them in days of persecution. Today we're still thankful for all that Jesus gave us. We're thankful for all that he revealed, all that he taught, and for the salvation that's ours in him. Jesus' work challenges us. It challenges us in mind and spirit and body. And it's not always easy, but he has asked that we follow him. And especially if we wear a Christian symbol, we ask that you would help us to stand in Christ 
and always be worthy of the life that he has given us. As we continue to pray today, we remember these difficult days and this time of pandemic. We remember especially the millions of children who have gone back to school in not only our country, but in various countries throughout the world. And we pray that you would be with them. We're thankful that for most children, this virus seems to barely affect them, but we're also mindful that they can uh, bring it back to their homes and their families and particularly to the seniors who are part of their family who are most affected by the virus. And so grant us, O oh God, grace during these days. Protect our children, protect our families, protect our teachers and those who work on the front lines. And we pray that this virus would be soon eradicated from our midst, whether that is through just isolating it or through a vaccine. We pray that you would uh, continue to work through our scientists and give them guidance as they try to come up with a vaccine. Lord, we pray for relief and uh, help to get life back to the way it should be. As we come together, we always come with things on our own minds and on our, in our own hearts, and we take just a moment to pray in the quietness of this time. Hear our prayers, O God, and hear us as we continue to pray in the words of Jesus. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I'm going to leave you again with some words of benediction and that will be followed by our music team as they come back and sing a song entitled, God Will Take Care of You. Let us not grow weary in seeking Christ Build up the faith that is in you. Pray without ceasing. Live out the love of God in the world and look forward to the mercies of God that lead to eternal life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care.